Today on GGTV, we're going to talk about a paleo diet and how it might not be for you. Oh, come on! What? You're not going to offer me any? Oh, yeah, here you go. Take a little. We're going. We're live. Intro is here. So, hey, Justin, um, I brought along with me today a guy who's uh, he's a friend of mine, um, colleague. We've done a lot of work together in the past. We've taught uh, masses of people, and uh, he's just recently written a book that's really cool. Um, actually, Nick's going to get a good shot of that. Supercharge Your Brain, and this is Dr. David Jockers. David, welcome, man. Hey, great to be here. Eric. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah we'll definitely we'll, we'll, we'll pimp that out a little bit more uh, later on for sure. I'm actually a little bit nervous. I'm trying to sit up straight because I'm, I'm in, in <laughs> the, here with like two doctors and like, yeah, chiropractor. You are a chiropractor yeah, as well, right? Yeah, I am, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so I'm all like slouched, internally rotated and everything. So, um, so uh, David, first off, tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe the people that are listening that um, in the CrossFit community or whatever that don't already know who you are and, and let us know what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, you know, I'm a natural health doctor. I've got a clinic out here in uh, Atlanta, Georgia area. And uh, like Dr. Eric was saying, and I've worked with him in the past. In fact, actually, I was an intern at his office for a little bit. I forgot uh, about years that, ago. Actually. Absolutely. Oh. And so, you know, I've struggled with health challenges in the past. I was a personal trainer in my early 20s and really did everything that, you know, that I learned in school and that I learned through my certification programs as far as my nutrition, exercise, and ended up with a lot of health struggles. Ended up with irritable bowel syndrome, lost a lot of weight, got really, really thin when I was in graduate school. And really through my own self-experimentation, I came across uh, a nutrition plan that was similar to the paleo diet. It wasn't really that I, I necessarily studied the paleo diet. It was more of just self-experimentation. I found out what really was working for me. Then as I started to uh, research more, I found all different types of you know, other information that helped back it up. Um, and really found the research and the science behind it. And I was able to regain my health. You know, I just been on a passion and on a quest to help as many people as possible figure out their own health journey. And uh, along the way, I've seen incredible health transformations, just literal miracles. Cancers, tumors go away. Uh, people reverse every kind of autoimmune disease. It's just been an amazing privilege over the years, just helping so many people get well. Wow. Okay. So, and, and when you talked about you, you weren't healthy or, or, or you felt like you were having issues, is that mainly you think it was, I mean, all nutrition related or was it other things in your life too? I mean, we're we talking about overall stress or. Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, nutrition is, plays a huge role in our health. Obviously anything we put in our body is going to play a huge role, but there are so many lifestyle factors, you know, for 22 years of my life, I was, I would say now I was a chronic insomniac. Right, I just really didn't sleep, and I, I had trouble falling asleep at night. I had cortisol dysregulation. I don't know anything about that at all. <laughs> <laughs> and so, well, you know, he's, he, he's not time. talking about the intentional last loss of sleep that that we go through. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not attempted intentional. sleep, but just not happening. I'm just aware yeah. that six thousand gram or milligrams of caffeine a day. I'm aware that what it does, but yeah. I'm just not willing to give it up. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> that'll we'll definitely work on that. that'll definitely have that stimulatory effect. Yeah, it wasn't really that I was. I mean, I was always a hard worker, but it wasn't really that. I, was, I couldn't fall asleep when I wanted to fall asleep. And so I was always tired. And I remember coming, a point of, coming a, to a point in my life where I thought, gosh, do I, am I just always going to be tired? And I really thought that was normal. I thought I was just going to have to deal with that for the mm -hmm. rest of my life. And, you know, it wasn't until I got really, really, really – and it was, I was lifting heavy. I was doing all kinds of stuff. And I just couldn't keep weight on it. It just started falling off. And so right now I'm 165 pounds. And I'm, I'm thin. I'm lean, but I'm, I'm strong. Uh, but I got down to about 135 pounds. And it was, mm. it was to the point where you? my parents – I'm 5'11". And so I got, it was to the point where my parents were Man. concerned about me, my colleagues. And that was when I was just like, you know what? What do I need to do, right? What do I need to figure out? My blood pressure was really low. And, you know, I realized I had very severe leaky gut. And I had major gluten allergens. I wasn't digesting pasteurized dairy well. Uh, you know, there was a lot of different things that were in my diet. I was eating tons and tons of nuts. And I realized, gosh, you know, when you have a leaky gut, oftentimes your body will produce antibodies to that. So I was just pr spouting out massive amount of antibodies. My immune system was going haywire, and uh, my digestive system was just torn up. 
and I had to make a change. You know, so your story there, it's, uh, you know, it's such, it's interesting when you hear someone say that or they kind of go through this path because the reality is, you know, you didn't know, you know, you thought that tired, the way you were tired is just the way that it was supposed to be. And that's like so many people that we deal with, you know, they just have this norm and their norm is their norm. Now, some people are, they kind of come to you and they're like, you know, I know something's wrong. And they don't really know what they can't put their finger on it. And as they start to improve, then they can go back and look and say, wow, these are all of the things that were wrong. You know, I had no energy. I couldn't sleep. Um, I was weak. I couldn't digest. I had gas all the time. I thought that was normal. You know, just all these things that people have, but they don't have a clue because there's no barometer for what's normal and what's not and because and our cultural norm is pretty sucky. And people are desperate to find that one answer too, right? Yeah, that's why they, that's they spend so much money on this and that and this supplement and going to the doctor's like, well, I take this for this. And then so, but when I do this, it gives me this. So I need to take this for this. And they're so willing to do it. They don't realize that how easy it is to fix it without all this extra like added in crap, right? Yeah, absolutely. So what, it, bring me back to what exactly were, were you eating? I mean, don't give me a, a diary <laughs> of your food every day. Like when you were having this issue, yeah, were, yeah. You, were you eating what most people would consider healthy? Uh, absolutely. Um, everybody thought I, w I had the healthiest diet. So I was a personal trainer. I was in the gym, you know, in the mornings working people out. I was fit. And, uh, you know, my, my typical breakfast, I would have something like Quaker oatmeal squares, which I thought was very healthy. <laughs> awesome. <Yeah. laughs> I'd have, of course, skim milk because, uh, you know, I didn't want the, the low fat. Low fat, baby. Low fat. fat. Right. Yeah, fat makes you fat. I'd load it <laughs> up with dry roasted unsalted peanuts because, you know, <laughs> yeah. peanuts are good. Protein, That's right? Sure. I'd throw in some what I thought was natural whey protein. Salt's bad, though. Right? Didn't have aspartame in it. I knew enough to stay away from aspartame. <laughs> yep, good. You know, good. put that in there, right? <laughs> Mix it up. Put a bunch of, bunch of blueberries. Of course, non-organic, right? I didn't know better. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I mix that up. It tastes great. I literally eat bowls of that every single day. I'd eat tuna fish on whole wheat bread. Um, I would eat. I would make, you know, my own tacos and stuff like that. And so, and I, I, and you know, at the time I was really restricting a lot of animal products actually. Um, mm. And so I was doing soy burgers and things like that. Mm. So, you know, this is 10 years ago. Why, why soy? Like, why uh. is everybody, I mean, this has been, when did that start? And maybe I'm not old yeah. enough to remember it's, when it started or whatever, like the whole tofu yeah. and all this thing. Like, when did that start? Early that, 90s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that vegetarianism, that, that push yeah. that happened there and vegan, uh, you know, the vegan push too. Yeah. And so, and you know, honestly, a lot of that was driven. It was driven by Monsanto. It was. Yeah, it was. So you get a company who's huge, has a ton of cash, and all of a sudden they have just a stranglehold on a market. Oh, you're going to find that, that that product shows up everywhere. And it did. Absolutely. Okay, it showed so up you everywhere. You know, my, my parents, uh, my mom's a naturopath, actually. And, and so in the early 90s, I, didn't know that. I mean, we, we were vegetarian. My family was vegetarian. Um, we did macrobiotic diet. And so what she thought was healthy was, you know, and she actually had her own garden. We grow all kinds of stuff. But she thought animal products bad. She thought, you know, we got to go with tofu and soy and low yeah. fat and lima beans and stuff like which that. Which was not, yeah, which it was yeah. just there because of, of, of big business, right? Yeah. So explain really? that, w exactly what that big business is. A lot of people may have heard that name. They yeah. don't know what it is. So Monsanto, so you have a company that, you know, in a, to put it in a real quick, short kind of description, because you could spend hours talking about this. But these guys own like everything. And they own so much of food production in that, you know, that cultural kind of normal food production. But they, they're basically, they push deep into biotech. So the idea of biotech is let's engineer, right? Let's make what's out there in the bio, uh, biological world. Let's make it better. Let's, let's enhance it. And then you can paint this beautiful picture on it of we are going to save the world because we're going to make food production so easy. I mean, we're going to grow crops in Ethiopia and change everything there. But let's stop. When you say let's enhance it, you, what they mean is let's make it more profitable. I exactly. So, <laughs> so the enhancement idea, and so, yeah, thank you. So you caught my sarcasm, but that's good to stop yeah. and let's talk about that. The enhancement idea really is what can we do to make this grow easier everywhere, right? So you've got the GMO soy, and the idea behind it is basically just Roundup Ready. I mean, that's what we know for soy is that the idea is that you could have a soy plant here, and we could all be armed with backpacks of Roundup and just pop, 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 and come back tomorrow, and it's still doing great. And do it again, pop, 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 and right, come back the next day, and it's still doing great. It's just laughing in our faces. Yeah, you think Roundup can kill me? Ha! Right, so now what you have is... It's the cockroach of plants. It is. So you have a soybean that we, you know, we know in general in CrossFit, you know, you guys are pretty smart. And in the health pursuit world, we've come further and further to understanding the anti-nutrient side of soy, that it really isn't so good, that if you want to get any value at all, you better ferment it. But even then, it's, yeah, it's like, do you really need to do that or could you do something else? Um, 
that's kind of where soy sits. And then on top of that, you make it the most uh, chemically you know, ridden plant out there because it can withstand all spray, yeah, right? You yeah. just spray it, spray it, spray it, spray it, spray it. And so those guys, they have that thing going like, yeah, we can grow so much of this. We can grow this anywhere, all the time, no matter what. So we're going to make this the new product of the world. So soy and corn. So yeah. same, same thing with yeah. corn, same yeah. basic way. So that is corn why and, yeah, every kind of product in the grocery store has one of those two things. It in does, it, you're right. If it's much, in a box, so. you're right. You look at the ingredient list, you're going to have something that comes from a soy or corn. Yeah, and what's right. unfortunate is the government actually subsidizes it. So yeah. the government <laughs> pays for it. It's so, you bad. know, when you have like a Happy Meal, I don't even know what a Happy Meal costs. What is it, like $1.99? It's like you think about Probably. it. It's a, it actually giving costs, them away. They're yeah, it actually it. costs like $25 to produce we, that. We were talking. It's just the it's It's the it's tax government subsidized. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we were ch- I was just talking to this uh, with somebody, I think my father, last night, uh, today when I was taking him back from the doctor. I was talking about, you know, I don't, maybe I'm in just a, in a health bubble, but I don't actually know anyone that admits to going <laughs> to McDonald's, but I, how, how I know they they're doing there? well. I know, I know they're doing well. That's what. So <laughs> it wasn't too long ago that I saw a new one popped up over in Roswell, and I said to my wife as we drove by, I said, "There's another McDonald's. Like who? People eat there? <laughs> like I thought those were going away or something. Like, I thought they were dying, but it is. It's like tobacco. If you're in the health bubble knows. that you know we're in yeah. and that we're in, like all of a sudden you don't you don't know anybody who ever goes anywhere near it, and you think, well, of course they're dying now. No. It, and let me stop. No. I'm not really in a health bubble. I eat and drink like crap. Um, I, from <laughs> everybody listening to me, that's why we were talking about with Brandon Phillips a couple of weeks ago. Sure, I mean, you know when people come in like, "What do you eat? Why are you in such good shape?" Like, you won't want to know. We can't what tell I you eat. what we eat. Absolutely, yeah, that's, that's not. a hidden secret. But I, I mean, yeah, McDonald's is is absolutely. I at least eat real food, right? So, yeah. right, sorry. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this down. And we're gonna you know ask David to kind of respond to this. So, so for everyone listening, you've already seen the title of today's uh, uh, today's podcast, but we haven't actually said anything about it yet. <laughs> So I want to go ahead and just kind of address this. Not important. So, uh, yeah, how strict paleo can increase your risk for disease. And I know it sounds like we're just going to rip on paleo. The reality is I think that we would all agree here that there's a lot of value and a lot of effectiveness that comes from paleo. But there's also – there are some traps that people get into where they they start missing out on potentially some very valuable parts of a diet – because of how they perceive paleo and how they utilize paleo. So we wanted to kind of kind of hit that. So I, <gasps> no. Yeah, I know. Isn't Are you crazy? telling me that paleo isn't the one solution for everyone's problems? Well, it does make you squat more, I guess. But <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so that is most people's problems. So I guess we could do that just for that reason and we'd all feel good. It, it makes you squat more? Paleo makes you oh, squat absolutely more? you squat more. Absolutely. Is it's just that like, like is that like when you buy the stickers at AutoZone and it gives you more horsepower to the car? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And then you know once you squat more, then that cures cancer. Oh, okay, well, so squatting, no, squatting does cure cancer. <laughs> exactly. Right? So, so, so argue about in that. the end, paleo might cure cancer still, but then there's well, other squat, problems too. As long as you're drinking milk with it. Squats and milk. That's, oh, that's cancer. true. Okay. Oh, milk. Uh-oh. We just said milk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, 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 Dr. Jockers, you have seen people for sure who have been in, in your practice, who've come through there, who've been on the paleo diet. And just tell me, like, what, do you, what do you think? What, what's like the first thing that comes to your mind of like, ah, oh, there's a trap there that they need to kind of get out of? Yeah, I will tell you, like, a, just a, a straight up paleo diet by um, – you know, some of the experts that are out there that are teaching it is phenomenal for most, most individuals, without a doubt. And they get incredible results because it really takes out some of the major food irritants that really um, you know, just cause inflammation in our body. So no doubt about it, I have tons of respect for the whole paleo community. Um, a couple of things that I see with people that are following paleo diet, especially people that are just you know, in the CrossFit realm, they want to be healthy, they want to get their protein, their fats, all kinds of stuff like that. One of the common things that I see is that they use a lot of nuts, particularly almond flour. They're doing a lot of baking. And you think about like in, in nature, for example, for our ancestors, before we, um, before, you know, we had grocery stores where we can go and buy nuts in bulk, right, and almond flour, <laughs> for them to eat almonds, I mean, they had to do a lot of work, right? Absolutely. Walnuts, I mean, to crack those things open. Delicacy, it's not, yeah. yeah. It's not quite easy, right? Yep. Nowadays, I mean, we can eat bushels. I mean, we could just eat pounds of, of nuts easily in one sitting yeah. and so Man, nuts, when, when we first started paleo my wife and i when we first started crossfit uh, millions of years ago um <laughs> we uh we would just try and we wanted bread so bad right and it, but it was you know so evil so we just tried to make anything <laughs> like macadamia nut biscuits and, and almond <laughs> yeah. cookies and like we would mix walnuts and pecans and macadamia nuts and almonds and just like into this like any combination that we could and throw honey on it just so we could get like some type of feel <laughs> of bread like i i don't understand 
I can't imagine the amount of money I've actually spent on bulk almonds, macadamia yeah. nuts, and, and cashews and everything yeah. else like and that. that. And that's exactly yeah. what I see. And so when we look at nuts, they have a lot of anti-nutrients. They have things like phytic acids that bind to major minerals like zinc and calcium, magnesium, actually pull these things out of our body. And so in nature, typically when the nut would actually crack and in a sense uh, open itself up to then you know, being planted into a, a new you know, plant, uh, it would actually sprout. And so the sprouting process gets rid of the anti-nutrients and the mm-hmm. anti-nutrients are there to actually protect the plant um, from, from predators. And so sprouting or soaking your nuts and getting the phytic acids. Go ahead. I'm not, even, I'm not gonna go there. You went there before uh, I there. I gave Continue. you a softball right there. Softball. Continue. That was a softball, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, we soak our nuts. It's all good. Yep. So anyways. Uh, so wait, so are you telling me that it's okay to put nuts in your mouth that have been soaked, but not dry nuts? <laughs> Come yes. on. Yes. That's right. That's, That's what right. Is exactly. That, okay, cool. Yeah. Continue. So, <laughs> so anyways, though, yeah, so soaking the nuts will get the phytic acids off, right? Help open up more enzymes, drive more enzymes, make mm, it more yep. bioavailable. That's a huge factor. The other thing about nuts is a lot of them have high levels of omega-6, low omega-3, which is already a, a problem in our society. And, and why is that a problem? Well, it's a problem because, again, going back to corn and soy, you know, most of the animal products that – you know, traditional animal products, commercial industrial animal products are there. The animals are fed just corn and soy. And so corn and soy are very high omega-6, very low omega-3. So average American walking around has something like a 20 to 1 ratio. What's genetically congruent is somewhere around 2 to 1 omega-6 yeah. to omega-3. So it's not that we don't need omega-6. It's right. just that yeah. we have way we more have than we already need. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So some nuts are higher than others. And almonds tend to be one that's a little bit higher in omega-6. Uh, then other nuts like macadamia nuts. Macadamia nuts have actually very close to a two to one ratio, a lot of saturated fats. They're good, aren't they? They are the best nuts, aren't they? (laughs) They are good. We went to Hawaii and that was one of the main reasons. Oh, isn't that awesome? Yeah, Yeah. hang around, just eat macadamias all day long. Yeah, absolutely, yep. And so anyways though, just eating a lot of nuts can really be a a hazardous thing for somebody's nutrition plan. Yeah, so so we definitely see that as a trap for sure, I know. And that's it. I've been one who's been, I've been guilty of that in the past too because it's so easy to put down almond butter. Right. Yeah. And I talk about that being my number one, you know, nut source is just a raw, you know, chunky almond butter. I just love that stuff. Not but only that, if, if if you're not eating all the carbohydrates and paleo or, you know, from the paleo diet, like you need something to satiate yeah, you. you and there's nothing better than a yeah. good, nice, you know, thick fat almond butter or oh, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So you can easily fall into that trap. Yeah. Right. You know, I used to crave nut butter like crazy. Um, but what I would notice is, you know, these are com- a couple of things that, that people that are our listeners here can really look out for. You know, if you eat something and you've got to clear your throat a lot afterwards, that's a sign you have a sensitivity to it. Yeah. If you eat something and maybe you, have, you break out, you have acne or a little eczema or something like that, it's a sign you could have a sensitivity. Eat something, you have gas, bloating, distension, low energy, you got to take a nap after you eat it, you know. What yeah, happens when you're eating mm-hmm. multiple, you know, you're not yeah. changing. The only way to do that, right, is to take everything out of your diet and start from scratch because most people, they just, they live in that state. I know people that just are pretty much always sick and yeah. it's, I'm sure it's two or three things that they're eating, but they don't know what it is. Yeah, right? sure. Yeah. I mean, your first step would be to go on something like a paleo diet, right? Take out most of the most common inflammatory agents, legumes, grains, pasteurized dairy, you know, commercial products, processed foods, you know, take that out. Then you're on the paleo diet and you're, you're still noticing, hey, you know, maybe I'm getting some results. I'm having more energy, but I just feel like I'm plateauing. Now you start looking at different things. Again, nuts would be one of the first things I would look at if I'm on a, a paleo diet, but yet I'm not, I'm not hitting my peak when it comes to my health. I'd start looking at nuts and seeing how I'm reacting to something like that. Yeah, and that's something I've seen too with people is that, you know, it's great because you can, man, you can tear people down and, you know, you can take someone from a cultural diet, put them into paleo, and they will feel so much better that they think it's it's just perfect, right? You I ta- did. I got all my allergies when I got off of it. I was like, yep. this is amazing. I, I yep. used to... I couldn't cut the grass yeah. when we lived in Memphis. And then you were cool after that, right? I, just, yeah. I, I would die every single time I cut the grass. Oh, look, my husband's laying out and he can't move again. <laughs> and my mask on. Look like. But it is great because they take out so many of those rich lectin, you know, those, yeah. those, those inflammatory proteins that you see them go away, like the legumes and all that mm-hmm. stuff you just mentioned. But, but then they get a few months at that level. And then they can start to realize that, you know, things aren't perfect. They, were, they seem perfect because I'm so much better than I was. And then that modified elimination plan that you're talking about, you know, yeah. take out some things slowly and see, what, see what's going on. 
And I, I agree that I think over time, the number one thing that I've seen that usually has to come out, usually maybe one or two of those nuts just completely. You know, yeah. they have to just get off of cashews completely or get mm -hmm. off of almonds completely yep. Yep. and move into uh, to something else. You know, we also have an issue with mycotoxins too, fungal toxins. Mm -hmm. Most people just don't really realize. So, you know, making sure you have a really good source. Uh, like for almond butter, Marinantha Farms is really good because they're really tested to make sure that you know, they're free of, of mycotoxins. You don't really know if you just buy some random nuts, good chance they're going to have some mycotoxins. And peanuts carry the, the most powerful uh, carcinogenic mycotoxin called aflatoxin. So in peanuts, we definitely want to stay off of. But, uh, you know, sourcing your yep. nuts from a good uh, provider or a good place is, is key as well. Okay, so nuts, bad, right? Um, mostly. A lot of it. Yeah, a lot. Of, know, I'm sorry. A lot of nuts. Excessive. Not, not necessarily. Yeah. Yeah, like, excessive use. Of you know, nuts if you're somebody bad, really. that that's really not dealing with health with major health symptoms, and you have a handful of almonds three times a week, not a big deal, yeah. right? But if you're eating like you know pounds of almond flour cake, right? Yeah. Or breads, if you're replacing all the bread that you yeah. used to eat with, with almond, almond flour exactly. bread, yeah, yep. you're going a little or high. Quinoa. Or yeah. <coughs> or yeah. Um, okay. So what what would be the next thing you would think? You know, next thing I would say would be to really have an open mind to grass fed fermented dairy. Okay. And from my experience, a good percentage of people respond extremely well to grass-fed fermented dairy. It doesn't necessarily have to be fermented. It could be something like grass-fed butter, which you can get at you know, Whole Foods. You can order this, this stuff online. Phenomenal source. Um, if you're going with, real, with milk, our ancestors really didn't drink straight-up milk. It wasn't like they milked the cow and are just like, slopping it down. They typically fermented it. Mm -hmm. They would have it sit in like leather uh, pouches and stuff like that. For example, like one tribes group that really still exists, the Maasai tribe in, uh, in Africa, uh, they walk around and, and a vast majority of their diet is this, this fermented milk that they carry around in these, um, these pouches, these leather pouches, and it just naturally ferments on its own with the predominant bacterial species that are, that are out there. And it's called something called Amasi and it's their super drink. And these, the average um, the average Maasai warrior, the male, uh, is six foot six tall, right? Six foot six inches. The women, women are six foot. Yep. I mean, these people, unless they die from you know, battle or like an infectious disease early in life, they live, they live 90, 100 life. years old, yeah. perfect tooth structure, perfect bone structure. They don't have uh, degenerative diseases. And again, about 70% of their calorie sources from this fermented dairy. Now they also drink blood. Yeah, they, say they, don't, they drink the cow's blood too. I thought that's so. That's strict paleo, though, right? <laughs> that eat, is. eat meat off the bone and drink blood. Exactly. Right? So. Just take it off. I'm all in. for it if it's going to make <laughs> me grow another three inches. I'm fine with there that. You go. So, but I think in this too, what we just identified, I'm just going to kind of tie these two together. So we're talking a minute ago about the mycotoxin concern that we have with the high nut consumption, right? And now we slide over. Now we're looking into, you know, what really I, I think is we're cutting into the probiotic concern yeah, too, right? Yeah, good flora. Yeah. So, because in the paleo diet, unless you're, I mean, really there's no, you're not really getting probiotics. Right. You're, you're letting, if you let your veggies age, you know, right? Like let your, your, your uh, spinach turn to wilted spinach. Now we know you've got a little bit of some probiotic there, right? There's a, an increase there. We're getting some bacteria growth there. But that's not what people usually do. You know, they don't wait for the banana to go brown before they eat it. I hate yeah. wilted <laughs> lettuce exactly. salads. Exactly, right? So, I but, but that's where that. your probiotic content is starting to develop, right? So unless you take and you purposely ferment your vegetables, you really aren't getting probiotics anywhere. So now we found a place to get probiotics, but we also realized that, you know what, you are more protected against those mycotoxins that are present in yeah. those nuts if you have the appropriate gut flora, which if you're in the trap, you're you're letting it go. You're letting it go. You're letting it go, and you're reducing your gut flora the whole time. When you say it, it when you say trap, I just keep thinking of that. Uh, what is it, Admiral Akbar from Star Wars? Yes, it's, it's a trap. trap. I don't know. There why. it is. That's good. I like that. What I'm thinking about. Um, yeah. So yeah. So that's good. So he says it kind of different. It's a trap. It's a trap. Yeah. yeah. Hey, it's Justin with The Garage Games. I'm here with Dr. David Jockers, author of Supercharge Your Brain, and he's gonna tell you how some movements might actually make you smarter. David? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, Justin. So, uh, you know, this is what's awesome. You know, those of us that love fitness, you know, we actually, fitness can make us smarter, can make us more intelligent. And so here are some things that we really wanna implement to actually enhance our brain, enhance overall neuronal growth patterns in our body. And so first thing, really three big things. First thing is gonna be novel movement patterns. What that means is new approaches. 
So if we're just doing the same workouts every single time, our brain isn't learning, it's not being challenged. So doing new movements, and that's why your, your CrossFit coaches, they're gonna constantly be changing your workouts up because that's implementing new novel movements that are stimulating your brain to actually grow and learn more. So new movement patterns, that's number one. Number two is gonna be balance exercises. So we really want things that really just challenge a portion of our brain called our cerebellum. The cerebellum means little brain, and it's actually correlated with, um, really with higher levels of understanding, learning, and better emotional control, as well as posture and balance. So working on our balance, doing one-legged stands, doing exercises, when we're not trying to obviously do like PRs, but actually doing different exercises, compound movements with, on one leg, right? Just balancing. That's gonna be really, really powerful for our brain and, and improving our overall intelligence and just our functional capacity. And then last but not least, we wanna do whole body movements and really cross body movements. So when we do something like, for example, a full body swing, something along those lines, we're gonna take both hemispheres, left hemisphere, right hemisphere, and go through something called our corpus callosum, which links the two hemispheres of the brain and actually ramps it up and really helps, helps it go on overdrive. And so the more we use that, that part of our brain, that linkage between the two hemispheres, the better we get at balancing those hemispheres. What does that mean? That actually means better balance, better coordination in your life. That's gonna mean better emotional control, better mental balance, better stress relief. You're gonna feel better, you're gonna function better. So do these full body movements, right? Cross body movements on a regular basis. So quick review for you guys, because I know that was a lot that, we just, that I just threw out at you. Um, quick review. First thing is novel movements. So we wanna change up our workouts on a regular basis, change up our even our daily movement activities, right? So if you're using your right hand a lot, you might even think about doing something with your left hand, right? Trying to eat your meal with your left hand or comb your hair or something like that will actually stimulate these novel movements. So again, that's number one. Number two is balanced movements. Incorporating dynamic movements that challenge our sense of balance, whether it's just a one-legged stand, right, or maybe a one-arm push-up or something along those lines to really, again, get that, that dynamic balance approach. That's gonna help your brain. And then last but not least is gonna be movement patterns where we're going across our body, okay? And so when we're swinging, different things like that across the body, that's linking the two hemispheres, which is gonna create a greater overall symmetry and synergy where the sum of its parts, you know, that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, this amazing symmetry between our two hemispheres that's gonna really unlock your full potential. So try those three things and I guarantee you'll see the benefits. Cool, thank you very much, Dave. Awesome, Justin, yep. See you guys next time. Go move, get smarter. All right, so you were talking about grass Sorry, fed back over there, dairy yeah. and all that yeah, kind of back stuff, over to right? that. So just a, a couple more, a couple more things. Let's about hit the grass, grass fed. fed. Yeah, yeah, do that. Because you look at, it, I mean, grass fed dairy's got a perfect omega six to three ratio. So you have a ton of long chain omega threes that are in there, which are critical. You also have things like CLA, which Whoa. you can also get in beef, but CLA yes. is a powerful nutrient. The fermented dairy also has vitamin K two, which is a nutrient that, again, unless you're eating a lot of fermented foods, most people are actually very deficient in K2, very key for calcium metabolism. And on top of that, you get a lot of sulfur-containing amino acids like cysteine, which help produce glutathione, help our body detoxify, help us recover. So CrossFit community, hey, we want to have optimal recovery, right? We want to we want to be able to blast our PRs and then wake up the next day and do the same thing. Glutathione is a key nutrient. We need sulfur amino acids such as cysteine, the best source is gonna be from grass-fed, raw fermented dairy. And talking about CLA, that's a lot of bodybuilders or whatever, oh, yeah. people pay a lot of money for CLA as a supplement that they take. They do. Uh, I think this opens up a door too for us to just maybe quickly discuss this, David. Um, when someone say, they hear that term and they might say, oh wait, okay, can I get all that I need here from, from coconut oil? Can I just do coconut oil? Won't that be fine? So, so why, why would you say to someone, well, coconut oil, yeah, it's good, great, definitely, because I know I mean, you're referred oh, yeah. to as Dr. Coconut by a lot of people. <laughs> so, but not That's a horrible <laughs> nickname. <laughs> 
Who, was, who hates you to give you that name? <laughs> well, Dr. here's Coconut. what you got to remember. Is well, my last nuts. name. My Coconut. last name is uh, is Jockers, so I heard it all growing up. Jock oh, yeah. itch, jock <laughs> strap. You know, I heard it all. So Dr. coconuts. Jerk. Coconuts. That's fine, right? Yeah, You're good oh, at yeah. that. Oh yeah, absolutely. So so yeah. So so now setting up the that <laughs> you grade, are seventh grade. You, you, you know? are a coconut loving doctor. So we set that up. Yet still, we would, I'm sure you would tell someone, yeah, great, coconut <laughs> oil, coconut oil, but you still need. You know this this raw dairy. So why why do we have to go? What's the difference between those? Yeah, two? I mean coconut oil is, is definitely foundational on this nutrition plan. So anti-inflammatory and amazing for the body. However, y- you only get really one type of fat. You get medium chain, small and medium chain saturated fats out of coconut, and that's key. You definitely need those, but you also need these long chain omega threes. You need things like CLA, which technically is actually an omega six fat, um, but ne- but it's actually an essential fat that we really, really need uh, for overall good health. And so we're gonna get that in the, in the dairy. We're also gonna get, again, those sulfur-containing amino acids. We're gonna get things like, for example, you know, the, the fat aspect of the dairy is gonna really concentrate vitamin A. You think about it, when, when a cow eats grass, I mean, just think about it from this perspective, we can't digest grass because we can't, we don't have the bacterial balance to break down cellulose. So the biophotons come down from the sun, they charge up the grass. Of course, grass, you know, it's, they're autotrophic, so they can produce their own energy through the chlorophyll. Then the cow eats the grass. It's got the unique bacterial balance to break it down. It's got multiple stomachs to fully metabolize it, take all the value out of those biophotons, and then it produces byproducts. It's got, we've got dairy, right? And so that dairy is like greens. I call it, you know, mm-hmm. drinking your salad or, you know, eating nice. your cheese salad in a sense, right? Yep. So you're getting all those biophotons, the greens, all the antioxidants that were in the grass delivered through the dairy. Now you've got a complete protein source, essential fats, you know, so, hey, we like to juice wheat grass. That's a cool thing. But you know what? You're getting your wheat grass, your oat grass, things like that with your fermented dairy, along with probiotics and so many other essential nutrients. It's a full package. You can stop because you had me at cheese salad. <laughs> so you're telling me that because the cheese that I'm eating was from cows that already ate a salad that I can't digest anyways, now I don't have to eat that salad? <laughs> Well, you know, I don't know that he said that exactly. I want to give you all my money. <laughs> you know, vegetables <laughs> Vegetables are a key part of our diet. Uh, but honestly, I, I really feel like to some degree they're a little bit overrated. Um, I think, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about it. But the reality is that, you know, these animal products, these really, really uh, high quality animal products, I'd take that 10 times over, you know, just regular vegetables, spinach, kale, things like that. Because, again, the fibers a lot of times in these vegetables are actually very tough and challenging in our digestive tract. Well, especially how how difficult is it nowadays to get vegetables that actually have nutrients in them that you know, yeah. that haven't been destroyed and so much pesticide. And if you do, you're paying a buttload of money for some some bell peppers like it's 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 ridiculous yeah. so i mean yeah. no i i agree I, we yeah. i try to eat as many vegetables as i can yeah. um but i i try to eat you know the most nutrient dense ones that i can because i know that ultimately if, if i go make a, a salad out of iceberg lettuce i'm pretty much just eating water <laughs> you know like i'm not but, but you know the interesting thing if you look at that nutrient density scale that we're that we're kind of referencing from dr joel Furman's book yeah. It's amazing how high iceberg lettuce is compared to a lot of the fruits that people would think, you know, well, yeah. I need yeah. this fruit. Well, there's actually more nutrient in that iceberg lettuce than the orange that you think you need for your vitamin C. I don't you know? need so oranges really either yeah. unless it's they're in thing. caffeine. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> so, um, so, okay, so, so then if we're looking at this thing and we're saying, okay, so then we got to eat some, some milk, some, some grass-fed, raw, fermented uh, dairy. Um, Which is not now, paleo. Now I'm a naysayer and I'm a paleo expert. And I'm going to tell you, man, that casein is just so bad. It's just awful. So, so why are you directing me towards a casein diet? Casein being the the, the, the protein, protein opposite yeah. whey protein, right? Yeah. So we look at whey and casein as the takes two, a, it's two very major difficult proteins. to digest. And so yeah, yeah. so it's so how would we respond to that one? Well, there's there's multiple forms of casein, and uh, the one that seems to be more inflammatory is A1 beta casein, and so. When we're consuming that, we're going to have more problems, whereas the A2 is going to be less inflammatory, and so we're going to have better response with that. So it's harder to find cows uh, that produce that, but there are companies like Beyond Organic that I know produce it. Um, also, getting like goat's milk, goat's uh, milk cheese, or goat cheese, different things like that. Goat, sheep, sheep's milk, sheep cheese. 
um, that's going to have less of the inflammatory casein molecules. Now, I will tell you that not everybody, I mean, it's just one of those things. Everybody's a little bit unique. There's, a, I wish there was like this cookie cutter approach that everybody <laughs> would get well from. Yeah. I mean, that would make it so much easier, that would wouldn't be it? Easy. Yeah. yeah that just would follow be. this diet. Every, all your problems will be solved. But unfortunately. <laughs> As we said earlier, everybody wants the panacea, Yeah. Right? Like, unfortunately, yeah. it's just not that easy. And so everybody's a little bit unique. And so what I found is that people that have very, very, most people in society, I would say 90% do great on raw fermented dairy that's you know, got the right form of casein in it, this beyond organic style of dairy. However, you got this 10% that, you know, just for whatever reason, they are a little bit more genetically susceptible to digestive problems, leaky gut, uh, they have poor methylation processes. So they're just genetically just more susceptible to having food sensitivities and struggling with different things. And out of that percentage, clinically, this is just an observation of mine, I'd say about 50% struggle with any form of dairy. Yeah. So right. it comes out to about 5% of our population. So good. Here's yep. a question that I have for you then. <clears throat> because I, <laughs> typical CrossFitter, um, I lost a buttload of weight. There's a there's a picture that, that Eric was making fun of me recently for. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> when I started about six months after CrossFit, you were I, went small. From, I went from you were 195 small. when I started, a <laughs> fluffy 195, <laughs> down to like 165. <sighs> and I, I look like I should have been on a Sally Strutter's commercial, mm-hmm. right? You know, totally. like just $2 a day. <clears throat> so... <laughs> So what I did after that, after just giving all that, I felt good, right? Because yeah. I was getting all the inflammation, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh, this is right. That was around that time. I Afterwards, uh, I got so much flack from my family and everybody like, you're going to die. You know, <laughs> like you're, there's a wind that's going to pick you up. And so I was like, screw it. I'm, I'm going to drink a gallon of milk a day. I drink a gallon of whole milk a day. Now, I grew up drinking milk. That's all we had for dinner growing up. But it was yeah. skim milk. Um, right? Mm-hmm. So... So I drink a gallon of whole milk a day for about 45 days, and I gained 40 pounds in 45 days. Um, yeah, and nice and bloated. My deadlift went up like 200 pounds, though. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> so, but w- the reason why I'm saying that is that ever since then, I have not been able to drink milk or yeah. eat ice cream yeah. um, from either goats or even whole legitimate grass-fed milk, you yeah. know, from straight from a cow or whatever, um, unpasteurized without getting a significant amount of mm. gut irritation. Now, I can drink, or I can eat cheese, though. Yeah. Cheese does not bother me at all. So do you have any insight as, mm. as it, to it sounds the like it, he does? It sounds like it may mm. be more of a lactose issue mm-hmm. in, in your particular yeah. case. Um, and so that's another factor that we see. So when dairy is fully fermented, deeply fermented, such as the cheese or even a butter, butter is, is going to be very low lactose content. Yeah, butter does I grass-fed butter my coffee every morning yeah, yeah. exactly yeah bulletproof coffee bulletproof yeah. diet yeah. yeah boom and uh and so anyway so dave asprey right <laughs> there you go the guy. and so anyways though that's that's a form where you're not gonna have the lactose so for in your particular case it doesn't sound like a casein issue it sounds more like a lactose issue and you think about pasteurized dairy i, I consider that a processed food so just like we want to avoid any kind of processed food we want to avoid you know all the processed cereals that are out there things like that we also want to avoid pasteurized dairy I mean, it's just a processed junk food basically and uh and then stick with the raw fermented dairies and again different individuals um something like a you know a a typical raw milk um you're gonna people are gonna have more issues because of the lactose but when it's deeply fermented making like a at least a 24-hour fermentation process making your own homemade yogurts or um kefirs or again beyond organic products like a mossy People that have lactose issues do a lot better when it's a deeply fermented dairy product. Yeah, I've got a uh, my sister-in-law. She, um, she, you know, she she's had this these gut issues for years here, where she di- she's basically a no egg, no gluten, no dairy diet. You know, that's her yeah. life. And um, and we introduced some of this um, this this grass-fed cheese from uh, Beyond Organic. And um, you know, and, and, and she the first time she kind of stepped into it, she's like just nibbling, you know, nibbling and waiting for the gut pain didn't come right so she keeps going she keeps going well like a pound later it did (laughs) it did come right (laughs) but i kind of said well you know i I think maybe 
anybody would be there now. Yeah. So so it was kind of cool. So we figured out that she could actually eat this cheese, and really yep. it's that deep fermentation, yeah, right? Exactly. So it just changes that. By the way, that is that the one problem with the uh, fermented raw dairy is that, I mean, it's not actually that hard to eat a pound of oh, cheese yeah, exactly. at a time. It tastes so good. It is yeah. good. So. <coughs> yeah, I've definitely, I've definitely had some before. Yeah. So I just, I just love cheese. You know, dairy. one thing, too, and I'm drinking, you know, I'm, I bet Nick probably caught this at one point here. sitting on the table, right? This kombucha, GT's kombucha, and a lot of people like to drink this stuff. And, and you might say, well, I'm just going to get my probiotics from this. But I'd just like to point out, like, I don't drink this with this idea in my head that, oh, I'm getting a huge pile of probiotics from this. I think Dr. David and I would both agree yeah. that, that the number of probiotics that, that need to exist in a gut that's in the size of a person like myself is something like a one quadrillion, right? Yeah, I was going to say it's, it's in the multiple trillions. It's, not yeah, it's you huge. hear the word like million and billion, and you're like, oh, that's a buttload of yeah. flora. Like, you, this is it's fine. It's a tiny little smidgen, and it's hard to really see the difference. There's a great, there's something called the Penny Project that you can see online. You can Google that. And they'll show it. Basically, it's just like some, you know, some mathematician put these 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 different references out. And so it's great to see what one trillion pennies looks like versus one billion or one million. You can see these differences. And then it goes to one quadrillion. And literally, it shows like a Washington Monument statue. And then it's like the entire Washington Mall is filled up two times as high as the Washington Monument all the way down the mall. And that's one quadrillion pennies. Right. So it helps you kind of get the. Oh, this is really not a whole lot. So, <laughs> yeah. so that's that's kind of the point. Like, this is probably two billion in this guy here, where you know you get into some you know fermentation of some dairy. I mean, you can be pushing up into the you know the tens of billions pretty quickly. Oh, taking yeah, in absolutely. taking in billions or trillions of anything just makes me tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like I don't like I don't like eating a thousand of anything. Yeah, I you mean, know it's <laughs> it's one of those things where actually like turning over your entire bacterial system on a daily basis is actually what we're finding is extremely effective. These things yeah. have short lives. And uh, so of course, squatting is a key aspect of that. Um, Cause that's how you get rid of it. And you that's gotta, right. Yeah. You gotta, I mean, you gotta <laughs> minimize uh, the way I look at it is, Hey, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta lower your <laughs> microbial load, right? That's basically what you're doing. <laughs> Lowering your microbial load. Again, uh, squatting cures <laughs> cancer. <laughs> that's See, right. We knew it. We knew it. You got it. Make room. You got to make room for the new guys. Right. And so you want to yep. re-inoculate. So, you know, really throughout the day, drinking things like that, um, c consuming fermented dairy, eating your own sauerkraut or, you know, obviously get purchased mm -hmm. at a store, things like that. I mean, this is just a, this should be a foundational part of our nutrition plan is really looking for fermented foods, live foods. They're, they're much more bioavailable. They've got living enzymes, probiotics, organic acids. So you're able to derive so much more nutrient value consuming these things on a regular basis and consuming the meat and all the other foundational foods you're going to eat with them you can get it. And so there's so many great fermented foods. You can get like coconut milk kefir, coconut water kefir, kombucha, mm -hmm. sauerkraut, kimchi. You can have fermented meats. In fact, you can make, you know, sausages, things like that. Or you can order these things that are really fermented aged meats. Um, you know, I mean, we can go on and on talking about different fermented foods. And you, these are kind of things that you want to be staple parts of your diet. I'm also a big fan of bone broth, yeah. right? Organ yeah. meats, things like that. So it from that sounds so delicious it, too. Oh yeah. It <laughs> sounds like we could then if we you know if someone wanted to they could definitely uh, accomplish their probiotic need sticking with this pure strict paleo mentality as long as they're focused on getting these fermented foods as long as yeah. they actually pursue it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what we want to know. What is the easiest way to take the paleo because we know paleo isn't necessarily bad or it's way better than most people's regular diet. Yep. So we get them on paleo or the typical maybe the CrossFit coach is like, "Well, all right, so I've got them on paleo. What do I do now? So the two main things that you would say would be maybe bring down the nut consumption a little bit yep. and then <clears throat> bring up um, the dairy, but specifically good dairy, a fermented, yeah. uh, you know, things that are going to be or grass fed and things right. like that. Would there be anything else specifically like the number, you know, the yeah. three? You got to have three. It's, yeah. like oh, yeah, it's yeah. not a thing unless be, right? it's three. I got the next one. I'm going to serve it up for us here because this is I wanted to talk about this because I know I've seen this so often, you know, ultimately. What, what we're trying to tell people, I think, when we get them off of a lot of these foods to move them to paleo, you're thinking, okay, we want to get you off of some of these inflammatory foods, but I also want to reduce your sugar intake, right? And yeah. so that's a key ingredient there, yet paleo doesn't necessarily, you know, just by nature, it doesn't allow you to reduce your sugar intake. You could actually really increase it without realizing it. And with that, you could increase your fructose load too, even though you're like, I'm never gonna touch yeah. high fructose corn syrup again. Mm -hmm. So you end up eating these rich fructose foods, you know, cause fructose Genetically exists. modified. And they could be fruits, genetically yeah. modified. Yeah. But you know, I'll find people, and, you know, and they go like two months on paleo and they're like, well, yeah, I feel like I'm losing a little bit of weight maybe. And usually it's inflammatory weight. It's not actually losing weight. 
because their glycemic load is so high. You know, we ask, well, what are you eating? Well, I eat a bunch, uh, you know, bunch of bananas a day and a bunch of grapes a day. And, you know, I love to eat sweet potatoes all day because, you know, I guess those are somehow paleo still. And, uh, and, and what you realize, and then they, 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 they end up, you know, finishing the day off with, um, you know, with some kind of almond, uh, almond floury cookie thing, whatever. <laughs> and they've honeyed it up so much that you, can't, you don't even see it underneath the honey. <laughs> And so I kind of s- pull back. I'm like, do, do you kind of maybe feel like you have a sugar it's peanut problem? brittle? <laughs> Is there a sugar? So I'm going to look at the sugar addiction that continues yeah. through paleo, and, uh, and and I think that's going to be part of it. So what do you think about that, Doctor David? Yeah, I have complete agreement. You know, as a, as a doctor, people are always saying, yeah, yeah, I'm changing my diet. I'm eating a lot more fruit and vegetables. And what it really means is they're eating a lot more fruit. Fruit. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. No. Fruit. Yeah. Absolutely. It's like when you look at something on um, on the FDA thing, one at the bottom. It, the first thing that's there is typically what's mostly in it, and then the rest of the stuff is just ah. Eh, just a little bit. I'm eating fruit. Yeah. Or as yeah. my wife says, I'm having a fruit salad for dinner. Yeah. Yeah. She goes, well, I'm having grapes for dinner. <laughs> um, okay, I'm having fermented grapes. For d- I'm drinking <laughs> wine <laughs> for dinner. <laughs> it's not the same thing. Uh. <laughs> you know, a couple things also, you know, with the dairy and stuff that we were talking about. You know, everybody's unique. So, uh, you know, Dr. Eric and I might have a doctor in front of our name, but really the greatest doctor in the world lives within you. And so we, we're mm. going to give you recommendations. We're Bam. Gonna really help drop in knowledge yeah Yeah, we're gonna help (laughs) coach you through the process but you got to really you know part of just living this life is about really gaining intelligence to your own body and uh, see how your body reacts like you were talking about with the dairy right so you're so clearly we realize hey there's a lack I do not eat ice cream or milk anymore and I'm okay with it because I eat a buttload of cheese (laughs) there you go So everybody's unique. So, you know, you want to, so just because we said, hey, grass-fed dairy works is a great food, hopefully you'll be able to tolerate, so you'll be able to get the nutritional benefits. But, you know, you want to check yourself again. You want to make sure that you, if you don't have any of those insensitivity signs, different things like that, um, you know, and same thing with, um, with, with coconut, I mean, with everything that we're talking about. So everybody's unique. So, you know, just balance it off the, the signs that your body's giving you. Cool. Well, David, uh, before we go, we run yeah. out of time here. Um, anything that you want to want to push or anything? Obviously, we got your book here. Yeah, um, yeah, so absolutely. Supercharge yeah. your brain by uh, Dr. David Jockers. Yeah. So this is my book right here, and so you know, I struggled with ADHD growing up. Oh, I struggled I with too. brain fog. Right. It's kind of the epidemic. I think our generation. You know, I'm 32 right now, and it's like our generation. We, uh, everybody struggled with it, you know? Mm-hmm. Could, could you yep. repeat that? I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so the reality was that I struggled with Here's it. Here's your I copy. Sur- <laughs> yeah, exactly. I struggled in school and, and, you know, I, I really found, and this is the great thing about just our human potential is that we have incredible potential beyond anything we can think, dream, or even imagine. But if we don't have, if we're not working in the right systems, we're not fueling our body properly, not living the right lifestyle principles, we're falling far short of that. And you know, there's a lot of CrossFitters that might be listening to this, and they might be incredible athletes, but you know, they're not even hitting anywhere near what they could be if they were able to put a full package that really, really allowed their body to run at its optimal level. They mm. can get, they can achieve so much more. And so that's really was the foundation behind my book. Was that I, I I'm a performance freak. You know, I look at myself as an occupational athlete. I take care of hundreds of patients, adjusting hundreds of patients in a day. I'm doing consults, long distance consults, working long hours. I need to get the most out of my day. People are counting on me. And so I've studied and researched everything you can imagine when it comes to performance and really also how it works with my body and also with people that I'm consulting with. And you know, that's where I came across this book. And what I found is that so many people, uh, you know, even people that are they're health enthusiasts and, and, and healthcare practitioners really are actually doing many things that are inflaming their brain and their body and they don't even know about it. And so my book really helps unlock the secrets behind that and really provides a framework for what you need to apply to get the most out of your brain and out of your life. And uh, you know, so the slogan on there is, hey, improve your mood, your memory, and your mindset. Take your life to the next level. And so that's the foundation behind the book. So, so you've managed to cool. both make me extremely paranoid <clears throat> and inspire me. So Excellent. that's pretty Good. cool. So uh, drjockers.com, go check them out there. Um, for Eric, uh, Health Sprouts. Health Sprout. S. No S. Oh, again. I'm sorry. You do that every time. <laughs> I, do, I always think I yeah. do it wrong the other way. So it's Health Sprout. It's Sprout. not yeah, plural. Okay. 
you couldn't yeah. have, you couldn't have spent the money for that extra s i i, I think i own that one too actually do you <laughs> <laughs> I think I so do. <laughs> um yeah so go there check that out uh let's see what else crossfitgarage.com absolutely um, absolutely go to our youtube garage media.tv um that'll take you to our youtube subscribe to our channel and like every video go to our podcast on the garage games on itunes and uh give us a five-star rating on that and uh what else what, what else what, what else, else? Man. what else we got i think you know what i really think this i think this episode right here is going to have a huge impact on some people's lives and so i'm also going to say that you should probably share this on your facebook page. absolutely yeah share this. Yeah. yeah pimp this thing out um I, I hope that nobody fell asleep during it i know there was a lot of big words and i went cross-eyed a couple times I um, saw that. I wondered if it was something that I was, was yeah, yeah. You so. need the brain thing for sure. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna read this yeah, book. I, if that happened to you, definitely get the book. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The next podcast, um, I'm gonna be much better at. Yeah. So, awesome. All right, guys. Anything else? I think that's it. We'll see you on the next yeah. one, uh, cool. Doctor David. Thank you so much awesome. for coming in. Yeah, thank Rock you, sir. It's it awesome to have here you here. We go.